now I had one particular agent named Gary Kose, and I guess he was a conduit. I had written, I had written a story, um, uh, an idea for all in the family. Uh, it was a very simple premise that um, Rob Brynner's character, the you know passionate anti-war Archie Bunker, you're a fascist character, um, uh, you're a racist. Well, Mike's sister uh, starts dating Lionel, the black guy, and Mike just he can't handle it. And there's one joke in particular that uh, I know they loved. Um, so I also wrote dialogue in the story. And Archie now realizes that Mike is upset, and he, he's just having a field day. Oh, this great liberal, oh, you know, he's upset because he was dating, oh, oh, I can just hear, they're getting married. Uh, Christopher was Polish. They're gonna get married, and you'll just you'll hear in the house the pitter patter of little jungle bunskies. Oh, just, uh, just, uh, can't you wait for this? Oh, they like the story. Uh, I was introduced. I mean, I wasn't flown out, but it was, you know, when you come out here, you're gonna meet uh, Don Nickel and Bernie West and uh, uh, Nickel Ross. And I, mean, I met the, the three guys behind the show. Uh, I met. Um, I didn't meet Norman yet, but. I now had an in of sorts uh, at Tanner Productions, and uh, I met Norman's driver. Now, Norman Lear dr didn't drive because he had a driver for years because he almost killed somebody in a car, and that scared him to death. He said, I'm not going to drive again, and I just won't do this. So I met his driver, and I played softball with him, and of course, playing softball, doing social things is how you meet people, that's how you get jobs. And, you know, uh, speaking of blind writers, as we we're not, but we're going to. Um, the black writers at the time, and there were a few more, and most of them were terrible. But that said, a lot of that had to do with, with you know, the kind of acculturation. And because I didn't have, nor did my brother, this sense of the limited world, you know, the, the black glass ceiling, most of them did. And so they didn't understand how white people talked or thought. I mean, they just didn't. And, um, and they were very angry at me. You know, oh, he plays softball. That's how you play softball with uh, these people. You know, call me Pisha. I play softball, but I also can write, and we're, or learning how to write. Um, and I remember, you know, this was a Black Writers Caucus. I'm jumping around here, but uh, I said, look, all right, all you guys, because all every the caucus would meet like once a month, and they would just talk about racism. And I said, look. It exists, okay? But rather than talk about racism, why not do something like bring a showrunner to the meeting and ask the showrunner what, you know, how do you do this? Or what, what do you look for in a script? And I said, and I'll, I'll, I'll read all the scripts. I'll read them all. I read them. They were just awful. What time period was this called? 74, 75, 76. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, but it had to do with access, I mean, cultural access, and I, you know, I don't mean to sound so caustic about this, but um, but it's it's sad, and it's still true. To, to my, and it's, although it's it's less true because because the culture, mainstream culture, has been so taken over by certain aspects of our culture, some of which I'm not fond of. The whole hip hop, uh, you know, everything is rap and this and dump and home, you know, so it's it's a total reversal.